Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today we're playing E4 as per usual. 21-20 right now. The e is looking nice and healthy as we play C4 here, the Steiner variation of the French. D5 taking inwards, and after pawn takes, we do not recapture here, although you absolutely can. I will instead play the ortho schnapp gambit with queen to b3 here. Very, very interesting. The reason it's a gambit, as our opponent shows us, uh, is because they can just take this pawn in the center. But then we play bishop to c4. And you see how dynamic and exciting this opening already looks. Uh, with immediate pressure on f7, the best move for black being queen e7 as they play. Then we just go knight c3. They have to play a move with the queen that's not really developing it to a very pleasant square. This c6. Are they going to go for, for b5 here? Interesting. But the, the point is, they are not developing their minor pieces. And if we can develop all our minor pieces with this... Oh, yeah. Okay, we can play this beautiful move here. And it's a move that I love playing uh, in the ortho schnapp. I'm not sure if it's the objectively best move, but the idea is to play d4, allowing en passant discovered check. Now, I've never come up against an opponent uh, who doesn't make this... Who doesn't accept en passant discovered check. You basically can't turn it down, but then they used yet another move to open up open up lines in the center where their king will remain for a while because they are not developing their pieces, and we can block by developing another piece. We have one, two, three minor pieces developed, and the queen beautifully here, ready to put pressure on extremely weak squares, and all the while, like, you can't even move this bishop yet, the king's still in the center, and we can castle queenside, bringing the rook to the inevitably open d-file as we can just take this pawn whenever. That's the thing, we're two pawns down, but this pawn will hang at some point. Or, we play knight f3 first. But I don't think it really matters, I'll be honest. Our opponent goes knight here. Ready to do what? Go here? We can just take this. We're gonna castle queenside. We're castling queenside. This rook is now the best on the board. Uh, what are these two doing? We're gonna play knight f3 what is that? No, okay, this move d2 makes sense here. Because if they play d2 here, I have to take with my king if I want to take it because the bishop's pinned. And in fact, if d2 here, I think the best move is king f1. We'll look at that in the analysis. d2 here? I mean, we can just take this like this, no? I could take with the bishop or with the rook. But I'll be honest, bishop takes, opening up the e-file where my opponent's queen and king are still sitting. So they, they go knight to c5 attacking my queen, like, okay. Fine. Surely no one cares, surely I just move my queen. I could probably sacrifice here and like still win the game somehow. Because I just have so much development. The idea that we need to get played really quick is knight f3, rook e1. And then every piece is developed. And this will literally be the most beautiful position ever. I like queen c2, I think. So we're going to go for it. And I mean, just look at the pieces. Look at the pieces. Opponents only one pawn up as well. That's the thing. We Like, the price of one pawn for all this development kind of has to be worth it. Although, are they are they getting some, some counter development in very quickly, maybe? What if we go knight f3? They take my bishop for free, and then I go rook e1. They can then go back with the bishop. That would be a terrible idea. Let's not do that. I may have to trade this light square bishop unfortunately but it's okay because after we take they have to take which is another move not touching their king side then we go knight f3 rook e1 oh, they castle queen side as well wow okay rook e1 here rooks are on the central files and now you have to solve the problem of this bishop your king is also kind of weak here they move the queen out of the e file that makes sense but eventually we're going to be jumping in and doing some interesting things. I think I should probably start with king to b1, which I'm going to do just to step out of the way of all of the stuff on the c-file. Okay, they developed the knight. Fine. Now what do I do? I really want to put my rook on the c-file and play knight here, because if they take, that will be checkmate. No, it won't because of this. But if rook here, and they play something like bishop e7, then we could sack here maybe, and then play this? I don't know. You know what? We're going rook c1 though, 
because I want to be able to move this bishop without seeing the immediate trade of the rook. And I really think knight b5 could be a good idea. In fact, knight b5 now, we hit the queen. If you go here, then I take, knight takes, and then we take here. That kind of looks good. Oh, you know what? We're just going to play it. Knight b5. If you don't take it, you have to just move the queen. Because otherwise I'm taking your queen. There is no way to counterattack my queen. Unless you play rook takes here. But then there's the knight. So they... Okay, queen a5, queen a5. What is going on? If I take here, and they take like this, I could go check maybe. Maybe sack my, my knight and open this all up. Or I... Whoa, I take here first. And if you play queen takes, then I take this for free. Does that work? I mean, we're winning the pawn back by force here. Takes, takes, and takes like this. And I can't lie, it looks appetizing to then play something like this, attacking a fork, and also maybe trying to sack my knight on c6. Okay, it's going to be some combination of taking here and then taking here, or taking here and then taking here. I don't know which I prefer. Takes? They could take my knight, though. We're going to do this. Take here with check. How about that? That's the idea. You take with your queen, I pick up the bishop. Then I'm threatening knight to e5, threatening a fork, and also maybe some idea to sacrifice on c6. This is beautiful. This is exactly the kind of chess I want to be playing. Also, if we're the one that has the dark squared bishop, our opponent is going to be left with some big dark squared weaknesses that will look very, very exploitable. And I mean, at some point, maybe there's even bishop e7, and we hit this, and we hit this, and we could just double some pawns, and then go after those. So we take here. We're not even at pawn down anymore. We have used our, our developmental advantage to play a tactical sequence here, removing the defender uh, with a check from the bishop. And now we can sort of analyze our position on equal material. Okay, they jump in with the knight. Do I just, should I just do this? No, then this is just going to hang. There's going to be mate threats. They're going to be threats to my queen. It's not going to work. So where do we move the bishop? If I go here, there's just takes. I don't really want to simplify, although we are, we, we can do that because we uh, have the material equality now. But that is an annoying move, definitely. I could drop back. I don't really want to go here because I don't feel like I have any prospects with these knights. And I don't feel like I'm ever going into e3 or f4 because both the knights just seem to dominate those squares, so I could go back to a3. You know, oh, am I going to do that? Am I really going to do that? Yes. That's my answer to that question. Yes, I'm going back to a3. Weird looking move, but the bishop still slices a beautiful diagonal. The queen and rook still have this beautiful battery here. I really like knight e5 and trying to sacrifice on here. But, uh, because then if the king moves, we could go check, and you'd have to, like, sack your rook, and the knight might hang, and, ugh. I just need my knight here. If they play this move, oh, well, then their knight's going to hang. So they can't play f6. It's knight e5. That's what's going to... Whoa. They don't want my knight. Off. Okay, here, here, then what? I want to sack something on here, man. That's all I'm trying to do right now. Takes, takes... I could go check. You know what? I think we're going to have to take. And then... Do I go check? It's not blockable, is it? I mean, you can block with the rook. Which is maybe okay. Maybe I go here as well. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I really like my position, though. If I go in here and if you play knight takes, I go rook takes and I take here and go check and... Okay, you know what? It's check. It's got to be check because we're holding f2 now. We're threatening this pawn here. If you block with the rook, you do defend the pawn. But again, you immobilize your own piece. You pin your own piece. Which they do play, but hold on a second. Can't I play rook d1? And let's say you move the queen. This is going to hang because this pawn is not defending it with the rook pin here. The rook is not defending it because of the queen pin here. Guys, it, it's rook It's rook d1. Rook d1, the queen has to stay attached to this, otherwise we're taking the knight. 
the only squares to do that from are here which is not possible here which is not possible here which is not possible here which is still not possible or here which won't be possible guys we're playing look at this look at this this is how to use your pieces guys what is their rook on h8 doing look how perfect my rooks are on the c and d files you could not get better rooks and i mean where can their queen even go like they can't go here they can't go here they can't go here here or here because my queen holds all those squares you can't move the queen anywhere here or anywhere here or here you can go here <gasps> but i can take i can still take because if you take my queen i can then take with the rook guys i love this game chess is a beautiful game rook takes d5 what a move resignation on the spot look how many pins there were here oh i mean okay it's only two but the fact that it's two is still surprising um, and if queen takes we just take with the rook let's analyze that game okay so here we are in the analysis if we scroll down here you can see that was a little bit of a mess although apparently oh should i have taken with rook when they went d2 i just missed a win here basically it's not so much a blunder although the uh, Lee Chess engine does not have the missed win function that chess.com has. So it's like in these two uh, in these two two sort of spikes here, I had advantage that I sort of like didn't claim and then it just regressed back to roughly drawing. But then we built it up, we built it up and tactically, oh, yes. Okay, well, let's go through the game. So we saw E4, E6 and C4. This is the Steiner variation of the French defense, as you can see up here. Main master move is D5. And then after CD5, ed5 queen to b3 has only played 10 times in the master's database most people uh including maxime vachier le grave whoa he loves this four games from from big vachier le grave over here but instead we play queen b3 now this is an inaccuracy which uh is not an inaccuracy because it's some theory it's a gambit the leech s engine is very harsh when you play gambits um, and after they take we play bishop c4 queen e7 and then I think knight c3 is the best move if we turn on the engine. Okay, it says knight to e2 is the best move. Half the time it says knight to e2, half the time it says knight to c3. I've analyzed this so many times. But I prefer knight to c3 because we set up this idea. Yeah, look, it's all minus 0 0.9. Basically just saying you're a pawn down, um, act like it. But they play c6, which is a bit of an inaccuracy. And d3 is the best move here. Although d4 serves functionally the exact same thing after on pass on. Uh, so, you know, even though d4 was not the number one best move because apparently they had b5 here after on pass on we transpose into the same line as if d3 and takes bishop e3 and here as i said d2 check is the move and then you've got to move the king if you take here oh maybe you can't take it i would have played king f1 king f1 knight f3 uh rook to d1 taken this and then maybe gone g3 king g2 rook e1 at some point but here, as you see, you know, to claim any real advantage, even though it's only a slight advantage, um, the knight has to come to d7. You've got to play kind of kind of well, even if d2 is played as black, but they don't play it. Then we get the opportunity to castle queenside. Then they go for check. And here, taking with the bishop was a blunder, apparently. Taking with the rook would have been apparently far better, which I don't understand why. They go here and I can... St oh, I'm so dumb. Okay, yeah, I, that was really stupid. The point is that if I take with the, the rook, then my bishop defends the c5 square. Um, I take with the bishop, and they can go knight c5, force my queen back to c2. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, look, yeah, knight, knight c5 is their only move to retain any advantage. If we go rook takes here, and they go knight c5, then we can take, take, and like pick this up. And the king here is the only move. Knight f3, rook e1's coming. King King f6 is the best move here, and then you just get... Oh, you can't get forked because of the uh, the king. Sorry. But there's rook e1, and then what? a6. Yeah, obviously a6 in this position. And you can move the king and then threaten this. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, of course, I should have taken with rook. I should have been scared about knight c5. Uh, but instead, we took with the bishop. Did see knight c5. Queen t2 here. And then just traded this off. Knight f3. Brought the rook to the center. And okay, in this position, this is really nice because it's zeros, which means that not that it's a drawing game, but that each side has equal winning chances. Um, this is good because I'm down a pawn. So what that means is that my attack compensates for the fact that I'm down a pawn. Our opponent's just seen us put our rook on the e-file. So when they play queen here, it's a mistake, which means we get a bit of advantage. Now, I didn't punish this advantage. King b1 was never going to be, you know, the best move, but 
Knight g5 was the idea. Because if you take what I take here, you take, take, and I'm threatening this, so you play knight f6, then I go check. Whoa. And if you move the king, then I can take, oh, then I can win the queen, whoa. Okay, didn't even think about that, honestly. I just wanted to move this and then move my rook so that we weren't gonna see the rooks traded off. Um, and I also thought that eventually this battery would be really useful, which it did prove to be, because knight b5, best move, queen here. Knight a7, best move, queen takes and bishop takes. That's really good. We found that con uh, tactical continuation. And now here, we're just slightly better because we've reclaimed the pawn and our opponent's king is kind of weak. And after they go knight d5, bishop a3, best move, knight d4, takes, takes, queen f5. So we played perfectly after bishop here which is really nice that the idea of knight b5 and this and this and this and this and this and then here and then this and then takes and then queen f5 was all the best you've got to play king b8 here and then i can take on f7 which is really hard to let me do so instead they play rook f7 which is a huge blunder because we have rook d1 and this is what i mean like our opponent has to play well um, and if they make a mistake they're the one that's going to be paying for it because we're the one that's attacking here rook d1 and uh, after you move the queen, we can just take here. Because if you take my queen, I take back with the rook. And if you don't take my queen, we're just going to trade off here. Like, here, bishop c5, what? I mean, we could have easily just traded this off and uh, just had an extra bishop in an endgame with better pawn structure and zero compensation for our opponents. That would have been a complete win, which is why our opponent resigned uh, after rook takes knight. We just won a piece using that beautiful open c file. Uh, so even though the idea initially of going for the whole king b1, rook c1 thing was a mistake and then an inaccuracy. You see that as long as you've got this sort of uh, cohesive game plan, obviously an engine or a really, really strong player is gonna slap you about. But as long as your moves make some sense, if the engine disagrees with them, but then you actually, you know, we then played a perfect sequence which was all about exploiting um, the the pin here and the idea with knight b5. You know, you can you can kind of justify, if you can justify the moves you make, and if you play consistently good moves that are all within the same kind of plan, all to the same end goal, you actually, you can get away with playing a lot of inaccurate moves. I mean, a lot of masters do it. They'll prepare an intentional inaccuracy to take their opponent out of theory to then play a really interesting idea, which is super hard to play against. And so I'm, I'm not mad that king b1 was a mistake and that I didn't find this uh, this sequence with knight g5. Because, I mean, let's be honest, what is knight g5? Here, here, you play this, and I'm going to go here. Like, what? what is this? What is this? I just want to play this, this, and use my rook on the c-file. I'm just going to leave this position on the board where the rooks are beautiful, the bishop's beautiful, the queen is beautiful. Uh, and we've got four pieces each, but mine are all doing exactly what they're supposed to be. So obviously we've won the game because of that. As I outro this video, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff that helps the channel. And I will see you in the next video. They aren't going to be every day over the next couple of weeks. Um, they are hopefully going to be every other day. Basically, I'm on holiday, so I'm pre-recording um, as many games as I can. And then I'm going to take my laptop and do a little bit of editing each day, trying to post some videos. Uh, keep the keep the growth going on the channel hopefully and yeah all of you supporting i really appreciate it and then we'll be back to daily posting uh late july early august thanks so much for watching goodbye